So in today's video, we are gonna go over exporting multi-tracks and stems in Logic Pro. We're gonna go over both because there's a big overlap in what you need to do to export one or the other. We're gonna do the multi-track first because it's actually less complex than it is to do the stems. So if you're purely here for stems, timestamp down below and you can skip over to that part. Okay, so we wanna get the multi-tracks out for our track. And we can do this for a multitude of reasons, to have a backup of it, to send it to someone else to mix or remix. There's a whole it's a whole host of reasons we might want to do it. Here's how we go about it. So we need to make sure we've got our overall session loaded up and everything tracked out as we want it to be. Now something important about this, when we're gonna export a multi-track, it's not going to take effect on our buses. So you can see in this track here, for example, I've got a drums bus right here. This section, for example, and playing a bit of the break back, whatever, right? There's the drums bus. The processing that's happening on that bus here, the Pro Q and the Pro MB on that drums bus will not be present because we're going to export the individual parts of that track. I'm going to export all the kick drums and the hat and the snare and everything that all makes up this break, which is what, like 11 channels. And then I've got this layer here and this layer here and these parts here. They're all going to be separate and not the process bus sound that I've got here, okay? If you wanted to do that and get the bus out of everything together and have it how that sounds, that's your stems. So we're going to get the individual multi-track. So that's the first thing we need to break there and note. So what we need to do, is you can either do this from the mixer here or from the playlist, whichever you like. I find the mixer easier. It's just easier for me to understand what's going on, right? If you've done a track stack like I've got up here, you'll need to open that up and take all the individual parts of it here as well. As you can see, I've got like kick, snare, snare two, hat, shuffle, etc. So we need to make sure that's opened up and you do that with a little arrow just here. We're gonna highlight that first one. We're gonna go all the way along on our mixer track or your playlist, however you want to do it, to the final track that isn't a bus. So for me, that's Wide Orcs here, and that is all of the multi-tracks in there. Now you'll see when I've selected that, I've still got a region selected, and it's selected everything in that region as well, right? We don't need to worry about that. We can still do the whole track, but a much easier way to do it is not have a loop on like I've got. So when we do select everything, it will now select every single region. See that? Now in Logic, there's two ways to export things. You're probably used to pressing Command B and getting this menu right here, which that's gonna export our two bus, our stereo out. There is a, another menu in here. If we go Command and E, we have our export menu here, and this is how we're gonna do our multi-tracks. The first thing to note up here is where we want the location of things to go to. For this demonstration, I'm gonna put it onto the desktop, but what you'd want to do is put it into your project folder or whatever you're gonna zip up and send off to somebody else. So I've gone to desktop, I'm gonna do new folder. I'm gonna call it do better, because that's the name of the track. Example multis. So name of the track. Do better example multis, create. That's now sitting on the desktop and that's the folder I'm gonna to export to. We know that because it's named up the top here. Okay, our next thing, range, right? I've got trim silence at file end. I leave that on because of something else I'm gonna do in just a second. But you can do export cycle range only if you just need to do a small loop. Uh, for, like say someone's just recording over a 16 bar for you, you can just do that part and put that over to them. Or you can do extend file length to project end. Now if you had a little loop section done over and you wanted to go to the end, you could just select that and it'll ignore it for you. I leave it on trim silence at file end. I tend to just leave it in eighth. WAV is completely fine if you wanted to do that. 24 bit depth is great. If you've got something that ebbs and flows a lot, has quiet sounds and goes much, much louder, really useful to make sure you've got a good bit depth. If you've got something that's really like, you know, dropping below minus 60 dB at some point or something like that, use your 32 bit float and it will be lossless for you even when you normalize. We don't want to bypass the effects and plugins in this case. I want to include the audio tail. The reason for that is you might have a piece of music that ends abruptly, but you've got delays, reverbs, effects, and you want that tail off at the end. You don't want it to just stop dead. So I leave that on and then it trails out, but because we've got trim silence at file end, then when it gets to silence, it trims that off automatically. Just makes life a little bit easier, saves a little bit of space. Uh, we want to include volume and pan automation if there is any. Uh, we could include tempo information. I don't find it necessary most of the time. Uh, 
Normalization, overload protection only. You shouldn't, on any of your channels, be exceeding zero. Ideally, you're not clipping anywhere, but this would, uh, <coughs> Uh, and this would basically stop that happening. We're not normalizing to zero or we can go off. I just leave overload protection on only. It's a nice little buffer in case something has gone wrong, a plug-in clicks or something like that. Um, do want to check it. Again, run through your track, make sure you're not clipping anywhere, easiest way. Uh, um, if you want to, we can add resulting files to the project browser. So it will bring it into this project and then you've got an export of the multi-tracks in the project. I would recommend just popping it in a separate folder unless you're specifically doing it so that you can mix it down in your own session for whatever reason. Um, send the session over to someone else. They've got the resource of having the multi-tracks if they've not got plugins or whatever in that session to work on. Okay, next thing um, in the, where it says pattern or elements, uh, this is basically going to be the naming convention. I tend to put project name and then track name. And it gives you an example of how that will be done. So here it will say do write upbeat liquid break dot A for as an example, right? So it tells you exactly the track and the name of it just to keep everything contained. Uh, if you need track numbers and stuff like that in there or the bar range, you can just drag these up into that pattern part and it will organize that name convention for you uh, if it needs to be second minutes time increments all those things for this instance most simple thing in the world project name and track name so then from there we can just hit export and it's going to run through the entire track and we'll just open up the folder so i can show you what that looks like and here we are you can see it's exported all of the multi-track parts out for us and that's each individual element these now all have exactly the same start point at zero, so you could grab all the files, drag them in, drop them in, and so someone could mix your whole project for you, send it back to you, and they don't have to worry about having the same plugins, the same synths, any of that jazz. For example, you know, once you've got that finished track back, you can have a look at releasing it with DistroKid. They let me get my music out to all of the major distributors, and they do that at a price an independent artist can easily afford. If you're ready to get your music or beats out there and want to release an unlimited amount of music each year, check the link in the description description below for a discount off of your first year of unlimited distribution with DistroKid. Okay, so what about stems where we want to get the bus summed bit of information out of our track as well? It's a slightly different process and let me show you how we would do that. So we can minimize all these away. What we need to do here is take our buses. And as you can see, I've got a number of buses in this track. We've got our bass. Wonderful. We've got something called vinyl, which is some resampled vinyl parts. We've got vocals, we've got drums, we've got effects. And in the instance of taking out the stems, what we want to make sure we do is that we put our reverb, or in this case my wide aux, into one of these channels as well, or we can put it into the effects channel. That's probably the most useful place for it to sit. So we're going to take wide aux and our reverbs here, we're going to change our stereo outs to bus and we're going to send that to our bus that is called effects. So these will now also land in this channel here. And now you can hear we've got the full sound with the width and everything else going on. Now you might be aware that we can't export these individual buses out normally and here's what we need to do to do that. We're gonna go from bass to effects, hold shift down and click those. So we've now highlighted all the buses, the parts we've got soloed right here. If we right click, we can then create a track and it's gonna drop those into our project. I'd recommend having the bottom or top channel selected because it will add them all in one place. That way we can see them all in that one section here. And as you can see, we've got everything on the track in these individual buses now. Now what we can do here is if we hold shift again and highlight them all now that they are in the play window like this, like before, turn our loop off. If we go now to file and export, we can do export five tracks as audio files. And it's gonna export these individual stem files for us just from these five channels that are soloed out here. I went over these settings in the multi-tracks, but I leave trim silence at file end so it does cut anything off after the reverb because we're gonna use include audio tail as well. Project name wise, we're gonna have, I have project name first and then track name. So as you can see, it will name it down here, do write base so we know what stem it is. Um, what we can do as well if you want to is put a space in after track and put stem in or bus however you like and it will name it as such we have do right bass bus for example 
whatever your naming convention you want it to be. We need to make sure it's going to the right place. So for this example video, I'm gonna to go to the desktop. I'm gonna create a new folder down here and I'm gonna call it do write stems example like so and we can see now it's highlighted that folder up there that's going to be our location that we go to so now when we hit export it's going to export just those bus channels with everything in it with the processing on it it's going to export those bus channels now with everything that goes into them with the processing on that bus and it will give us our overall mix that we heard when we played everything back because we've We've sent our effects in there, we've sent our reverbs in there, all into that effects channel. They are gonna have that same mix and balance and processing that they would have otherwise. So we can just drop those in and play the track back with just those like five overall stems. Now, if you were doing this export to specifically have like a stems mix for something like Tractor, I'd make sure you include the tempo information so it can be drag and dropped. You can also add key information in there as well, which could be really useful for a DJ who wants to mix and match different keys in different parts of songs, especially if like your drum breaks are tuned to a particular track, trying to bring the drums into something else doesn't always work. Good options to have in there, but for the example here, we've just named it and I've shown you how to add anything you want in on that naming convention. Cool. And now we can see here are our stem files. We can take all of these, for example, drag and drop them into a track. We're gonna do create new tracks. And just as if we had all of these selected. Can now play the whole track back just from these stems. Happy days, right? I hope that's been helpful for you and I do look forward to seeing you in future videos. Take care.